good job from the whole theater. You can see what I normally do uh, by the fact I've left the talk CSS logo on there. <laughs> so I'm a stranger. Um, I have no code whatsoever in this. So now you can specifically see. And after Tim's uh, killing of your brain earlier on, <laughs> it should get a bit easier from here. This is one of those inspirational things that will hopefully make more sense in this t-shirt. <laughs> it's probably more complex than your JavaScript, actually. Um, I'm here to talk about fear. Um, fear is something that is innate in humanity. We fear things, probably in biology altogether, to be honest. Um, it's something that happens when we're confronted with some kind of danger or something, we basically respond with fear. It stops us from walking in front of a bus or picking up a spider. It's a very good thing. Um, fear manifests itself in different ways for different people. Um, how you react to something depends on your life. My pictures are weird. So <laughs> <laughs> some of them you'll think you're great, others you'll just be scratching your head, but it's okay. Uh, some things are frightening them out. Yeah, we we'll the we'll get the <laughs> <laughs> What I like about this is this thing is actually really genuinely swinging the knife at the guys. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're wondering, the animals have turned against us and we're kind of ruined. <laughs> You're not scared by this, I don't know what we're scared. <coughs> Come on, crap, get him. Yeah. Use a gun. Huh? Use a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see a crab with a gun? <laughs> That's even worse. Um, oh, in code, regular expressions are probably the most fear inducing thing that's out there. But it depends. What would life actually be like without fear? Um, Thanks to Tim's suggestion, uh, no fear tattoo. Um, in Australia, we'd call someone with one of these a bogan he you'd say an arbeng or something, I think. Um, don't alter your body, because you'll regret it. <laughs> There's one known human amongst our seven billion or so who has no fear. She's got a uh, problem with her amygdala, and she actually does not have fear. Um, because she survived long enough to be discovered and to be researched, there's an incredible paper written about her. She's known as SM in the paper, we don't know what her actual name is. But to test out what no fear actually is like, um, the people doing the study took her into three different situations to see how she would react and to see what it's really like to not have fear because it's something that's so intrinsic for us. So she was taken to a pet store with all sorts of exotic animals and she was told 15 times that, uh, she asked 15 times if she could touch one of the really large poisonous steaks and just kept like, getting told, no, it will kill you. Being killed is bad. Um, <laughs> she kept trying to pat the tarantulas that were going to attack her and tarantulas don't kill you, but you, know, you don't want to get bitten by one. It's not really um, a good idea. But she was just inherently curious into these things. Asked about it beforehand, she said, oh yeah, spiders are scary, but it's a social norm rather than an actual reaction that she has. Um, they then took her to a uh, sanitarium um, that's been abandoned and is rated as the most haunted place on earth. Um, to make things more interesting than that, they did it at night on Halloween and they took 15 other people with her as test subjects and then got some people in there to jump out of her in costumes and basically try to scare the pants off her. And it didn't work, she just thought it was hilarious. Like, these people dressed up as monsters and things, she thought, this is great. Mm. Fear is a good thing. Franklin D. Roosevelt's famous quotes, the only thing that fear is fear itself, this is wrong. This is very wrong. You should be scared about walking in front of a bus. The reason that SM is actually with us today is basically because of cognitive behaviour therapy. 
where she's been taught that walking in front of a bus is a bad thing because you'll die and your friends will miss you. Your friends missing you is a bad thing, so don't do that. Your friends would be upset. Yeah, I don't want my friends to be upset, therefore I'll live till tomorrow. Just no concern. It's really strange. Tonight, what I'm going to talk about is four different fears that um, make a difference to us as developers. Things that we basically face every day. And the idea is to know what affects you and therefore you can actually do something about it. It doesn't mean the fears go away because there's basically nothing you can do to make that happen. But when they're affecting you, you'll have a better idea of what's going on and be able to adjust your behaviour accordingly. Um, the first fear is the fear of the unknown. Um, this is when you haven't seen something before and you just don't like it, and that's the standard behaviour for anything. You've seen the Instagram logo launched recently, the new iPhone. <laughs> When I looked at it, I've got quite a design background. I looked at it, I looked at the history of the app and everything, I thought they've actually done a pretty good job. Most of the reactions are really bad, but this is normal. You don't like anything different. Anything that's new, anything you haven't seen before, and it happens over and over again. When we're in our 90s, maybe not us because we're tech people and kind of like that stuff. But most people will be, be looking at stuff and say, oh, what's with this new um, you know, crazy AR thing that these kids are playing with? It'll rot their brains. Um, it's this fear of the unknown that's driving that. This is telling us that TV is going to kill us all, basically, from the 80s. Um, the real risk at this is you can become comfortable with normality and you don't ever look for change. That's what fear of the unknown basically drives in you. All we basically want is tomorrow to be the same as today, which was the same as yesterday, and that makes us happy in the short term. It's not good for us, though. Fear of failure is the next thing, which is a derivative of fear of the unknown. We don't want to try anything new because we might get it wrong. Who wants to get something wrong? Because you, know, you might end up making a really bad error message here. I'm from Perth in Australia originally, and this is from the, uh, the trans transport iOS app that they've got. Never do an error message like that, because that is bad for you. <laughs> At least they're kind of trying, I guess. Um, there's a precautionary principle that applies here where um, you don't want to try anything too radical because you might fail. So just don't even try. Like, too hard, don't try. But that's, that's basically what you need to fight. Fear of inadequacy. This is basically manifested as imposter syndrome. Um, personally, I get struck by it quite badly and it makes me not want to do things like what I'm doing right now because what do I know about any of this? Um, as programmers, we will basically be confronted with a meeting and you'll be sitting there and talking about something and like your boss is telling you something is how it is and you know quite well that it's not but you'll just sit there and like well who am I to say anything different and that's what um, inadequacy is all about. We basically feel like this dog here, we probably don't feel as cute as the dog but <laughs> got no idea what's going on. This is really really hard. Um, if you don't have fear of inadequacy, then the odds are that you are actually inadequate at what you're doing. It's really curious how this works. You're looking at um, Dunning-Kruger effect, where um, if you're smart enough to know that you're not very good at what you're doing, then you're probably okay at it. And conversely, <laughs> if you think you're really awesome at something, then you're probably not. I mean, Donald Trump is a classic example. <laughs> um, Kiasu, fear of missing out. Um, Everyone else is doing the thing, therefore I'm going to do it as well because, you know, what could be so wrong about it? Angular is great because it's written by Google, so let's just do what <laughs> Google is doing. I've had this justification at my office, it's, it's frightening. Like, without actually looking at the merits, good or bad or anything, you just say, well, they're doing it big, it has to be alright, right, right. What could be wrong? But you become a sheep, you become cargo culted. Um, cargo cults arose from World War II where the US dropped uh, supplies on various islands that didn't really have much contact with technology or anything outside. And um, 
during the war, all these supply crates just came from the sky, fell on the islands, and the villagers are like, this is awesome. Never seen this stuff before. Food's coming from heaven. This is brilliant. Then the war ended. The supply drops ended. And the, the islanders were sitting there like, well, what's going on? So they actually created their own planes out of, like, you know, bamboo and trees and things like that to try to get the gods to bring the, the cargo back. And this is the cargo cult. Um, and this is basically what we do where we fall into that pattern of repeating something because we didn't really understand what was going on in the first place. Um, and that's your fear of inad inadequacy can drive you towards that, where rather than actually stepping out and trying something different, you just keep repeating even though it's not quite right for you. Um, it pushes us further towards this, which is inaction is an action. If you stand by, then the world is going to turn whether you like it or not. Um, and you turn into Wiley Kiyot Coyote, basically, where the market has moved from underneath you, but you're still going. Um, countless examples of this, uh, not too hard to really think about when this happens quite often. Blackberry, for example, that said keyboards are going to hang around forever. Um, the rest of the mobile industry that said touch screen, <laughs> no one wants that. The screen's too big anyway. Um, this is the risk that you're basically up against. So now we know what we're scared of, how do we actually fix it? And if you've seen The Martian or read the book, you'll know that science fixes everything. Um, this is the scientific method, and the scientific method can be pretty much applied to anything. Uh, and it's a good way to actually, I'm gonna go through some of these bits and just show how it can actually improve what you do. The first most important thing is to question. If you don't question, then you're just another one of these chairs here, basically because you're just going along for the ride. You need to actually ask what's going on. Um, look at something from a different angle. Try to think about how it might behave differently. The risk of this, of course, is to overdo it. Um, if anyone's done any design work, then you know that everyone else thinks they're a designer and they tell you everything. This is, you know, if had the same thing in code and drive us mad. As someone who does both code and design, I love code because no one tells me what to do with the things. <laughs> um, you basically need to press ahead with the questions anyway because um, there's an innate fear of change as we discussed earlier on. This, this is DigitalOcean, they know about the fear of change. So the, the button down the bottom, this is when they do releases and there's a change thing. You have to press the button that says, I do not fear change to go ahead. You can't get out of it. Uh, so this is basically trying to make people aware that I don't want these things changed. It's different from what I had last time. It's like, well, change is okay. It's all right. Facebook got quite caught up in this for a while because they, they did a lot of studies on what users were um, doing after they brought changes in and they realized that every time they change something they got really bad feedback and at first their reaction was to oh let's fix it immediately then they realized like, let's just take, take a step back and um, now we know that no one actually likes any change we'll just let the things ride and, and test them out properly um, do not fear change but research is basically your next step on from questioning if you don't research, then you've basically got an opinion. And an opinion is worth something if you've got experience, but it's not worth all that much in the end. So you need to basically look for something. Looking for something can be doing your own original research if you've got resources and the drive for it. You might search for something else. It can be really hard. Um, sometimes answers will just leap out at you. The risk of not basing your decisions on research is you end up with hippo, highest paid person's opinion, which is basically where your boss or whoever else, project manager comes along and says, well, I think it should just be this way. Um, and the, you've got an opinion, they've got an opinion, who's right? They get paid more, so <laughs> why not? Um, if you don't have anything behind your opinions, then they're about as empty as this article. 
I love this one because it's like trying to say something really groundbreaking from <laughs> Yahoo, but there's no content here. At all. <laughs> it's like emails from bosses. Yeah, everything is in the <laughs> subject. <laughs> but there's the, this wasn't even a rendering bug. I think they just didn't upload the content properly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't forget to put the ads on. Though. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's okay. That's, that's guaranteed. Um, I've kind of already gone through this, but the, the basic difference is between <laughs> when you're putting something forward, it's saying my research shows this versus I think this. If you've done research on it, then it's inherently got a whole lot more weight. Um, and you can even quote your references on it if it's something that you're doing in writing. I recently got asked to do a carousel for a client. and. If you know anything much about UX stuff, carousels are not a great idea for most things. In fact, if you do carousels, you're probably a bad person. It's okay. Um, I spent some time, I know this because I've been doing this stuff for years, but I still took the time to actually put together a pretty lengthy email. I quoted all my references and everything else like that. And then they just turned around and, and the highest paid person's opinion won. Um, I feel better that I tried, I think. You know, once you've done your research, you start prototyping, you start trying something out. Um, the earlier you get into this, the better. You've got to fail early and fail often. This is where we have to fight our fear of failure because we don't want to do anything too radically different. The easiest way of doing this in practice is that every time you iterate through your product, try one thing that's different from last time. Um, you might have like a really solid, um, like one of your many modules or something else like that that you rely on. But this time around, jump into Google and see if there's something better for it. Just to see if you can actually improve your product along the way. And maybe you'll reinforce what you've already got, which is fine. Maybe you'll find something completely different this time that will revolutionize your product. But the point of questioning, the point of this in the first place, is that you don't just arbitrarily follow what you're doing. Um, this guy's Brad Bird. He's one of my favorite directors. He did that and that and that and that. And not many people know that one because he didn't do so well. But um, one thing he said on Twitter a while ago is that you really need to follow some ideas all the way through to their end before you know if they're going to work or not. And that's, that's really the point of prototyping. And um, you see plenty of products out there that are well researched. Microsoft are a classic for this. They do an incredible amount of research behind their products and yet they fail at things because it took them to that point to get to the market before they realized that it just didn't quite work. And that's a risk that you're going to face, that you'll basically do everything right and still fail. But at least they tried. The converse is Samsung where they basically copy whoever else is out there and just hope for the best. Um, and when your shotgun strategy doesn't work, what's left Samsung? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Yay, Samsung. <laughs> testing is absolutely critical. Um, testing it when it's released is not a great idea. Um, sometimes things just aren't going to work out like they've done, but rudimentary <laughs> testing will help you. I think you're meant to walk through and take over the digger or something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Good old Sydney. Um, once you've done everything, you need to actually review what you've done. Um, design is never done, software is never finished, your product is never actually done with. If you work for an agency, it is, but then it's not really because it's going to come back to bite you or someone else at some potential point. Keep questioning, keep looking for improvements because there'll be something different the next time around from what you've seen. Um, if you do it well, you basically, this is probably a little bit hard to read. Um, it says, don't tell me what's wrong with you because I'll find out and tell you. This is the ultimate of where you need to be. You could sit there and basically wait for the user to tell you when there's an error. But if you're monitoring things properly, if you know your environment really well, then when the user phones up and says, hey, I had a crash, you can say, yes, I know. I've just rolled the fix into um, testing and we'll have it out in the next hour. Um, don't know how reliable that is for Chinese medicine, but you know, maybe you want to hear some symptoms, maybe not. 
but you need to basically keep testing to make sure your original hypothesis is still valid because otherwise you basically yes you've done your research but you know, it may not be current anymore um, the risk is that sometimes you'll have some pressure on you <laughs> <laughs> No fear, right? <laughs> um, like this phase is done. Agile is really classic for falling into this trap where you've released the thing, just shut up and get on to the next one. And design often fails really badly in this, where once the thing is, is finished, then you just have to forget it and move on. But that's not good, that's not healthy for the product. You need to keep looking backwards and make sure that what you've done is basically like regression testing, but in a but unless you're a tester, you don't have to worry about that. But you look at your own little role in the project and make sure that what you're doing still makes sense. Um, you do need to actually go all the way through to releasing something onto the market and beyond before you even know what it is meant to do. When the Kindle came out, everyone thought it was going to change everything, that paper books were going to be the past and that was going to be in, the end of it. What's actually happened is the Kindle's plateaued. Uh, yes, it's taken out all the, the competitors in the ebook world, more or less, um, but they've got their own little niche market amongst hardcore readers who like reading lots of things anyway. I love my Kindle. Um, book sales, paper sales are pretty healthy these days. Kindle is not threatening them anymore. Uh, but would you turn around and say, therefore, the Kindle is a failure? But not at all. The original plan was to conquer the world, which is great. The reality is it's turned out is not quite that, but it's still a very successful product. And this is where revisiting your original assumptions is important. If your original goal was to do this incredible thing and conquer the world, but you've taken 10% of it instead, then be happy with that, because at least that's a good achievement. If you don't look back at that, then you look at it and everything's a failure, which is not a really good way to be. Um, the real crux of it is, what have you got to lose? Um, and Kodak are a classic example of this. This is a 1989 uh, digital SLR, and one of the first that was created. The guy who built this is Steve Sasson, who created the first CCD, the first digital camera in 1975. He worked at Kodak. They said, this is great, but we're a film company, we don't do digital. Um, so they put him back to his lab, he came back with this in 89, and this is actually in Nikon, I think. So he hijacked other people's hardware and still made it work. And not long after this turned it into something pretty similar to a DSLR that we know. And they still said, no, film's pretty solid, we're, we're good with this. Um, they licensed their technology off to other people, which turned it into the digital camera revolution that's killed Kodak as of 2012. Um, this is basically back to Wally Coyote. They didn't see the market shifting even though they were long past the cliff. Only thing that kept them going in their last few years was the royalties of everyone else using their digital camera technology, which is insane. Um, I'm quoting fictional characters here, which is a little bit desperate. <laughs> but until you've lost your reputation, you never realise what a burden it was or what freedom really is. Basically, you've failed already. You're already at the bottom. So you might as well have a go anyway, because why not? Otherwise, you're just going to end up there anyway. And I have to quote Bowie, because I'm still quite cut up over him. Um, I don't know where I'm going from here, but I promise it won't be boring. If you have a go, then it's going to be interesting. You can fail spectacularly, and at least people will pay some attention to what you're doing, I guess. You look at, it's really obvious with the SpaceX uh, things that are going on. When their rockets fail because someone's miscalculated, it blows up badly. Uh, a lot of the space exploration, um, the probes that have gone off to Mars and trying to land on asteroids and things, someone gets a decimal point wrong and the whole project fails and billion dollars are literally up in flames. At least they had a go. Had they not, they'd be sitting there still staring up at, at the moon and wondering <coughs> if we'd ever get there. The last thing you want to be doing is sitting on the sidelines. This is basically, the way I see it is the difference between mediocrity and something better than that. And you may know, never get anywhere above average, but if you have a go, at least you'll have some satisfaction that you've tried.
thank you. You'll find the slides for this on SlideShare. You can find me on Twitter. This was really frightening actually doing this because I'm a developer. Yeah. I don't know about that stuff. Um, but you know, you do your research, you put something together and it kind of works. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks for giving this very different talk. Thank you. Um, while I'm still in stage, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. where did this slide come from? I don't know. Um, I run Singapore CSS. So I've snuck in here and, and fooled you all. <laughs> um, this time next week, if you want to learn about some front-end stuff, um, join us at Bash uh, next Thursday. So it is a week from now. Um, we're not as haven't been around as long as Singapore JS, and we don't have as many people. But we're trying really hard. So <laughs> come and join us, and we'll have some fun. We're always looking for speakers as well, so if you're keen to tell us about any kind of front-end related thing, then you know, it can be semi-on topic, and that's all right, anyone. And then when you've done with that, you may want to drink. Um, I'm fairly new to Singapore, and I don't know that many people here, so this is basically my excuse to um, have a beer with people, because nothing breaks down the fear like a frothy pint or something. On June 10th is our third bar food. Um, so please come along to that if you're interested in beer and I don't think we ever talk about any development thing, but you can pretend that if that makes you a good thing. Thank you.